a question of Ferro Sport with myself, Adam Arnold, and obviously here we've got special guest Christian Byron, who, for those of you who don't know, is England runner for 100, 800 meter, and 4x400 relay. He's got a lot of major honours, um, so four time medalist in the University Championships, bronze in the Scottish and English Championships, and three time Midland champion. Um, so thank you again, Christian, for coming on. Uh, in your honour, you've got a very busy schedule, and asked you to be doing a benefit from what you're going to share with us today. So if you could start off by just talking us through your journey for us from a youth starting in athletics all the way up to where you are now. Yeah, so um, I started off, like many people really, just interested in um, trying to run fast on the playground, so trying to trying to be the best 100-metre um, runner. But I didn't really understand what athletics was as a sport. I just knew that I wanted to run really fast and faster than my friends. Um, so for me, that was always been the drive from a young age is, is just that natural racing instinct and wanting to, to compete and having far too much energy um, as a young child. So um, from there, I began to um, look at if I could compete for an athletics club. I, I did my own research and started to find out a little bit more about um, what this sport was and, and what I could do within it so um my PE teacher helped me out a lot as well so um yeah always always listen to your PE teachers um and so I went down to the club um, my local club which is Birchford Harriers so um for those who don't know Birchford Harriers is it's a brilliant club um and it's been around for a very long time one of the best clubs well the best club in the country but I didn't know any of that so I just wanted to go there and hopefully have a chance at um, running or, or training and just seeing where it would go really so um, I was lucky enough to to get an opportunity to, to, to join a group so um, there was a coach there and he took me on um, but I think the reason why he took me on at the time was not necessarily because I was the most talented um, or because I was uh, he, he knew about me um, b before or, or what I'd achieved because I was very new to the sport but um, I remember him saying once that you you came up, you came to training and you showed a dedication and you, you showed um, a certain spirit that made him think that oh okay maybe I'll give him a, give him an opportunity give him a chance. So yeah, I was lucky enough to get that chance um, training with some great athletes at the time um, and just really trying to trying to work hard and, and build up myself as an athlete. Um, at that point, I hadn't um, achieved anything or run any competitions or anything, but I was just doing it because of the, you know, the love of it and the passion for it. Um, and it got to the stage where um, I trained really hard um, and then managed to get selected to run in some competitions. So now I was um, competing for Birchford at a young age. So this would have been when I was around 14, 15 sort of age. So I wasn't really new to the, uh, I didn't start when I was really young, um, but I was still fairly young when I, when I started doing the sport. Um, so yeah, uh, from there I managed to compete and I started off doing reasonably well, but um, the more I trained and the more I turned up to training and, and listened to those around me. So whether that be um, my PE teacher or whether it was the coach or, or the group with, with the older athletes in there to listen and ask lots of questions. And eventually I, I started to improve quite a lot. So I'd started to win county championships. Um, I was making it to national finals. And then I was, start, I was starting to... Um, really do well with athletics and it, and it was um, in the, the 100 metres and the 200 metres. So I was um, a sprinter at the time. So um, from there, um, things, things were going well, really enjoyed it. But I noticed that um, I also enjoyed doing the longer distances. And so um, I, I spent some time uh, training for that as well. So um, our at school they do the the, um, the local cross country events and I do pretty well at those so it got to a point where um, I decided to make a really big decision and and move away from this from the sprints and move closer towards the longer distances so um, at first it was the 400 meters um, and that was when I probably had my most success um, over over 400 meters so um, I 
my first England selection was with, with in the 400 meters. Um, I also won a lot of national medals um, and, and just really started to do well um, within that distance. But I'd, I, I'd learned something from the sprints and, and carried it through over to the, to, to that distance. So um, for, for, for those of for those who don't know, um, the 400 meters is is one lap around um, one lap around the track, and so it's a bit of speed and it's a bit a bit of endurance that's required for it. So um, I put those two together and managed to do well within the 400 meters, um, and yeah, that was going brilliant. But I I always have um, new goals and and new things that I want to achieve, um, and one of those for me um, was also the 800 meters. So I took a little bit of everything that I'd learned at each stage, whether it be with the 100 and the 200, the 400, and then um, I progressed on to the 800. So um, th that was most recently, actually. So that was a, a few years ago. So I've gone from doing the 100 and the 200 when I was about, um, about 15 years old. I progressed on to, um, in my um, early 20s, giving away my age here, um, in my early 20s, I did... Um, the 400 meters and, and that went great so the next challenge for me now is to still do the 400 meters um, but also move on to the 800 meters um, which yeah that that's currently where I'm at at the moment and um, I'll go into maybe a little bit more detail in some of the other questions but yeah so so now that's that's pretty much where I'm at now I'm doing the 400 and the 800 meters perfect thank you very much that's really really interesting to hear obviously because some people think that athletes go into a sport and go into an event and then just do the same event always. So it's nice to hear that you've obviously mixed it up, challenged yourself, and then tried to sort of progress, I suppose, in within sort of athletics, because obviously there's lots of different avenues you could have gone down, but obviously you've gone through the events. So it's amazing to hear. Just to obviously, you've touched on that slightly, but what motivates you, Christian, to still keep trying to sort of still maybe go for the 400 or the 800? What's your main motivation? Yeah, so the main motivation for me is, is always to do your best um, and to never have any regrets. So for me, I don't want to look back and think, oh, if I would have worked harder, I could have got to this level, or if I would have done this differently, I may have achieved this. I always like to give it everything that I've got so that I know at the end um, I've tried my very best and everything that I could control um, I have done so um, for me that's always the motivation and it's such a great feeling when it goes when it goes well um, and that keeps you going through some of the most difficult times because um, yeah there's times when you lose there's times when you're injured there's times when um, it's, it's difficult but it's all worth it for the end because that feeling that self-fulfillment that you have at the end of it is is better than better than anything it's a, it's a great feeling Agrees completely. Um, did you have a, obviously a role model or a biggest inspiration when you were growing up getting into athletics? And who was it? Yeah, so um, for me, it was always the people who um, I was training with and the people who were um, in in the sport. So um, all of my training partners are great motiv are a great source of inspiration and motivation to me, um, and, and always were. So I think. Finding someone who is doing the same thing as you, um, who comes from the same background or who has the same interests, seeing them do it first is, is always great. So um, whether that be um, a teacher, a mentor, a coach or, or a family member, um, there's always someone you can look to. Because I think for me, none of my family did athletics. So I didn't have someone in my family who was um, a, a role model directly in that way to do um, athletics but in the same time they were very supportive to me um, and it was also a great source of um, inspiration to, to to have their support as well so yeah always look for um, the environment I would say always look to your environment for inspiration. Perfect thank you that's amazing because obviously it's absolutely vital because we've got lots of students that are trying to progress along the way and obviously seeing others do well obviously usually is a key motivating factor for them. Now big one Commonwealth Games is 2022, being a local man, obviously running for the famous Birchfield Harriers. How special would that be to get a place on that team? Oh, that's that's amazing. That'd be brilliant. Um, that's what I'm working for. It's it's a tough task and it will take a lot of effort and nothing is guaranteed. But yeah, I'd love to be there. That'd be 
amazing. As someone who's from Birmingham myself, um, and you know, I've I've trained for many years at the Alexander Stadium, which is where the, the athletics will happen um, at the Commonwealth. So it's just that would just be a dream come true. Yeah, okay. and we obviously hope that you, you get there, and obviously we wish you the very best within that dream. Um, you. Quick question now on how you keep fit and focused during lockdown, because obviously it's very difficult. Um, obviously, you're at work at this moment in time as well. So how do you keep fit and focused during lockdown? Yeah, so um, keeping focused, I'll, I'll start with keeping focused. I'd say break it down into segments. Just do what you can. Um, if you can set out an, an idea of what you're going to do throughout the day, that always helps. So for me, I know that um, I may need to uh, go for a run, um, but I also might need to do a bit of a bit of strength and conditioning. So um, there's there's space to do some circuits where I am. Um, so uh, press up, sit ups, um, squats, th- those sort of exercises. Um, are very good for uh, keeping up fitness and, and just keeping yourself motivated. So, yeah, um, I'd say, yeah, keeping everything in segments, doing, um, uh, you know, d- doing um, bits throughout the day um, always helps. And I think that um, keeping that focus as well uh, is c- can be done by mixing things up. So don't always follow the same routines if, if, you're going for a run, maybe try a different route. Or if you're doing um, a circuit of exercises, maybe try different exercises. Or, you know, you can look online and you can find so much information about about how to train. So um, I think just keeping it varied um, and, and using your time uh, effectively is, is, is the best way. Um, for me, there's had to be some changes because it means that at the moment, obviously, we can't train in groups. So, um, yeah, to get around that, I think, it's good to have, um, have have talks with your friends or your training partners, um, which has been great for me. We regularly talk to each other and motivate each other and inspire each other as well. So, yeah, um, keeping in touch with your friends is a very important part of, of training um, as, as well. Perfect. Um, what are your goals and aims of 2021? Obviously, we spoke about 2022 Commonwealth Games, but what are your aims this year? Yeah, so this year, um, the main aim for me is to try and run a PB in all of the events that I do. So in the 400 and the 800, if we do get any relays, um, hopefully be able to do you know a, a, t- a great team performance with that. But yeah, that's always the first aim. Um, always want to be the best that I can, can be. That, that's always the first thing. Um, and then from there, we look at championships as, as an athlete. You always aim at the aim for the Olympics, and um, me being no different, that's something that, um, again, is is very difficult. Um, but at the same time, I'm focused and will give it everything that I can to try and get there. So yeah, that that's kind of the the big aim, and, and that'll be brilliant. Um, but yeah, we are probably going to have some national championships this year, um, if if COVID allows for that. So definitely be giving my all for for that competition and, and trying to win. Um, as many races as possible this year. Perfect. Sounds like, oh, absolutely amazing. We're going to obviously follow your journey, shall we say. Uh, what does a normal day look like for you? So obviously as soon as you get up, what what do you have to do in a day-to-day routine? Because some of our students don't sort of know about uh, athletes' days and how things work. So how, how does that work for you? Yeah, so um, I'm working full-time as, as well as training, um, but I operate on a full-time um, training plan so I'm training six days a week um, and on some of those days it's twice a day so um, what I usually would do um, is wake up quite early um, I like to um, stretch a little bit in the morning uh, it's great for getting yourself ready for the day physically and mentally as well it doesn't have to be long um, but literally just a couple of minutes um, and just to kind of wake yourself up for the day I think that's a, that's a good start um, I generally tend to um, listen to something that's going to be um, stimulating for the day. So maybe a little bit of um, a bit of music to get me going early in the morning um, or some kind of motivational video or, or something like that, maybe. Um, and then I will um, most likely go for a run. So um, if it's um, if it's a day when I've got a lot on, I'll make sure that I uh, split it off into into different segments so I'll have my run in the morning um, 
have breakfast and then go to then go to work or log in to work um, on my on my laptop. Um, and then once I've um, finished work or or maybe at lunchtime, I do a quick gym session or a quick circuit session. Um, again, just trying to use the time that I've got um, as, as best as possible. And I think it's easier to get the work done when you when you put it into a routine. So um, if it's something that you're doing every day, you'll just get used to it and it will feel strange if you don't do it. And once you get to that stage, you know you're on your, you're on your journey then and you're going to get to where you need to because it's part of your everyday schedule. You're not, you're not taking time out to do it. It's something that you enjoy and it, and it goes, goes through your day um, like that. So, yeah, I'll get those done, um, finish work, and then either there'll be another training session um, or I will um, just rest and kind of just um, switch off as well. I think that's really important because – um, so often you can concentrate on um, training and racing and um, you also need to have that balance as well. So you need to do something that you enjoy um, that relaxes you. And so that takes away that um, all the, all, all the uh, activity that you've done in the day, um, you do need to rest and recover as well. So um, yeah, have a good meal. Um, and then, yeah, try and get to sleep. I try and get to sleep quite early. Um, and then, one thing I'd say about with sleep as well is that I try and turn off um, my Wi-Fi before I go to sleep just because um, it can keep you awake a little bit. Um, and so it's nice to, um, if you are watching a film or doing whatever, you're, um, wh- whatever you want to do before you go to sleep, um, if you can turn off your Wi-Fi just before, it, it does help with your sleep and also keeping, um, keeping the room as dark as possible as well. Um, something that I've learned in terms of getting a good night's sleep and being ready to go for the next next day. Sounds pretty full on, Christian, but looks like that's amazing, isn't it? Like you just obviously so dedicated to both top, to, uh, both sections of your life and it is really, really good to see how hard you're working. And linked in with that, our trust motto is work hard, be kind, choose wisely. And I was just going to say, obviously, can you pick one of those three sections and explain how you use what this motto, but obviously you've already done that, so... That's amazing to hear that you are living and breathing our motto as well as your own ethos in life. Um, Motto. Yeah, so training camps, what are they like? Um, Some of our students have asked what a training camp's like and what's a training camp? Yeah, training camps. um, So I've been to a a variation of cold weather training camps, um, also known as altitude training, um, and I've been to warm weather ones as well. So it's really an opportunity for you to um, leave your current environment and go to another one. So it's a change. It's a change of scenery. And I think it helps so much just mentally, um, because, uh, as I said um, previously, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, um, sometimes it can get um, boring or frustrating or quite or quite challenging. And that's that's the reality of it. But. Um, when you're able to go to a training camp and, and really focus on your training um, in a new environment. So it might be, you know, a nice warm country. That's brilliant. Um, or in a cold country, even, um, it's great for you to um, go through that and build up your strength um, through, through that in that kind of environment. But any, any change of environment, I think, is brilliant. So even if it's just training um, at a different location down the road, it's still, it's still a change um, for your body and, um, and mind as well. So yeah, at, at a training camp, um, we generally train in the morning. We'd, well, yeah, we'd always train in the morning. So we do, um, I, I spoke about splitting up the sessions and having one in the morning and then going to work and then doing another one in the evening or at lunchtime. Whereas when we're on the training camp, it's just completely athletics. So um, in, the, in the morning, we do both of our sessions which is which is nice because then you've got the whole day just to um, relax and recover, which means that your training is going to be better. Um, and in, in these environments as well, the the um, the weather is one of the biggest um, makes the biggest impact. So whether that's warm weather, which allows you to run faster and it's easier for your muscles to to um, to run at speed, or if it's um, cold climates, which can also be good if it's um, at altitude, which means that um, it's a little bit more difficult um, to, to, to breathe um, and it, it, it makes the, the sessions a bit more challenging so that when you come back to, um, 
when you come back to this country, for example, then you you have that endurance built in from the hard work that you've done when it was colder. So yeah, they're, they're brilliant opportunities. Um, and I'm just fortunate that I've managed to be, I've managed to go to a few of those. That's cool. Well, obviously great insight into those and that's really good to hear. Um, what do you enjoy most about r- athletics and running? What are the two things or three things that you think, oh, that's why I do it. That's why I love running. That's why I love my athletics. I think one is the friends that you make. Um, because those are people who you see them at their at their weakest points when they're tired in training and you know can barely move <laughs> or and you also see them um through their the times when they don't win um or but then you also um have the opportunity to be with them through all of the the wins as well and equally it's the same for you they're always there um for you through that through that path and that's that's a unique thing is that is to have someone who um can understand what you're going through and, and, and what your um, what your goals are. So, yeah, that's that's one of the and it's so easy to make friends when it comes to sport as well. Um, I think that it's whether that sport is athletics or any other sport, um, it's there's so much opportunity to make friends. So that's that's a great um, positive from it. And I would say that. Also, all the different places um, that I've been able to compete at as well. So um, I've been fortunate enough to be able to travel to um, across Europe and um, to America, et cetera, and, and, and other places and compete there. So um, it's just, you know, being able to see new parts of the world or even new parts of the country as well is definitely a bonus of, of being able to be an athlete. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Um, do you have a favourite track or event that you really like to run and think you've done well at? So it might be Birchfield Harriers or uh, Home Ground or it might be somewhere else that you think, yeah, when you go there, you get into that mindset of this is a fast track for me. Yeah, so um, I'd say that event-wise, I still really love the 200 metres because um, it's just a, a raw event where you can just run almost as fast as, as fast as you want. Um, as fast as you can sorry so yeah I, I love that um, but also I'd say that in terms of tracks um, the Alexander Stadium um, was pretty good I know they're rebuilding it now so um, be interesting to see what that's like but yeah I've ran some PBs there and, and won quite a few medals there um, and also Bedford as well so the, um, the Bedford International um, Stadium um, is used for a lot of athletics competitions. So sometimes there's national championships there, sometimes there's university championships there. But um, that's probably my favourite because um, that was the the first university championships medal that I won. Um, and it, it was a, a big PB um, and it was unexpected as well. So yeah, Bedford and Alexander Stadium. We'll have to go and try and get our students there and there when we've got some athletics competitions there. Yeah, definitely. That's where the fast times will come from. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And lastly, if you could give our students one piece of advice, what would that be, whether that is obviously in athletics or in any sporting context? Persevere. Um, keep going. Because um, sometimes the path that you take might not be the same as someone else. So... Um, there's been so many times when I've seen uh, people who were at the top of their field when, when I was in school, for example, but they didn't get to the next level, not because they weren't good enough, but because they just didn't persevere with it. They just didn't carry on. And you'll see that there's other people who maybe weren't so talented, but they, they worked really hard. There's ones that were talented as well and worked hard, but um, what it comes down to is the hard work has got them to another level when they've got older. Um, I'm talking about going to world championships and making the finals and, you know, the Olympic finals and, and, and all those sort of things from people who weren't necessarily even the fastest in their school at the, at the time, but they just worked hard and kept going. Um, and they listened to their teachers and listened to their mentors um, around them. Um, so that has, that has helped them to get there as well. So, yeah, I'd say keep persevering and listen to the, the good advice from your family uh, coaches, teachers, anyone who um, can help you get there as well. Always keep your ears open and, and listen out. Cheers, Christian. Thank you very much for obviously giving me time. And I think our students are really, really going to benefit from that. So that's um, a wrap sort of thing. So we're going to wrap it up there. So thank you again. 
And that's episode number two of A Question of Deferra Sport with Mr. Arnold. And that was our special guest, Christian Byron. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.